Welcome to my masterclass, Beautiful. And the reason I call this beautiful is because we all have beauty. And my goal is to help you see, celebrate, and enhance your beauty at every age. We're going to go decade by decade, but starting with a little bit about me, I'm a board certified dermatologist and I'm also a medical journalist with over 20 years experience. I've written three books. I'm also clinical associate professor of dermatology at NYU Langone Health. I've worked in a research lab. I've traveled the world lecturing and educating both the peers and my public on everything relevant to aesthetic and medical dermatology. And I've worked on lots of advisory boards, helped develop lots of skincare lines. So I'm excited to bring all of this to you in this first in my series of master classes. Many women think, or should think really, that to be beautiful is the birthright of every woman. And this is how I feel about every patient I see. My goal is for you to look beautiful at every age and for me to help celebrate and enhance your beauty. So let's start with how we age. When you look at young skin versus skin as it ages, there's a difference on many levels, starting from bone all the way through the top layer of the skin itself. Young skin is plump, it's got firmness, it's got elasticity, it has resilience to it, and it has an evenness of tone. When you look at the bone, you're a child's face is often small because the bones are still growing, the structures are still forming. As we age and over time, we start to, we develop and then we start to recede and lose bone in a very, very specific and reproducible way, which is different in men than it is in women. So when we're young, we actually have a wide orbital rim. And so you can see some deep set eyes in children, which actually gets better as they age and then starts to recur as they get older. And the chin, if you look at the child's chin, it can be small and then it gets more prominent as you age. And then at a certain age, again, it starts to recede. So when we look at somebody who hits their 40s and 50s, the orbital rim, the socket in which the eye sits gets bigger. So the eyes recede in and the chin gets smaller. When you have lots of sun damage over time, that can cause unevenness of skin tone and also the formation of lines and wrinkles. But so much of what I'm talking about is well-defined. And these are things that are preventable to a large extent, not so much the bone changes, but many of the skin changes that we see. So it's not like, oh, just throw up your hands and say, well, I'm gonna age and there's nothing I can do about it. It's quite the opposite. Up to 90% of how your skin ages is up to you. Only about 10% of how your skin ages is genetic. And let's look at the timeline. When you look at teens through 20s, 30s, 40s and 50s and 60s and beyond, there's very specific things you can do at every age, at every decade to help enhance, preserve and celebrate your skin's natural genetics and to optimize your genetics. When we look at our enhanced timeline, we look at teens, the biggest problem teens typically have are acne. And what I noticed is that acne scarring that looks mild in your teens can look deep in your 40s. So I'm much more interested in helping my teenage patients and my young 20 patients to help improve those acne scars when they're young and they can still make new collagen in order to help prevent those scars from looking deeper as they get older. In your 20s, we already start to see sunspots and then early acne scarring. In the 30s is when collagen production slows down and even stops, so it's about preserving collagen and repairing what we can. And then in your 40s and 50s is when I see patients coming in and they all say the same thing. They say, one day my face just fell apart. And in the 60s, it's really about maintenance. And obviously somebody who's 60 can't look 30 or 20, nor should they, because it's just weird if you walk around and you look like your, your daughter or your child, um, or even grandchild in some cases. So it's really about understanding that some of the structural changes that happen not only should be celebrated, but give us beauty in a way that teenagers will, should look forward to having one day, because it comes from having balance, harmony, from a life well-lived. 
from showing all the things that you've been through in your life. And some of those lines, wrinkles, and changes we see can really be a way to highlight beauty and don't necessarily need to be removed or concealed or erased. So when let's start with our teens into our 20s. I'm not sure how many of you are in your teens to 20s, but we're taking a poll question. So let us know your age group and or if you're addressing someone in your teens or 20s. This is important information to know. So one thing I really like to do with my younger patients is get them into the habit of having good skin care. And this means proper cleansing, exfoliating on a regular basis, using a retinoid because it both helps acne. And then as you get older, it helps against wrinkles. And and of course, sun protection. So this habit that they build at this young age, both just the habit of having a routine and also of using quality products will have a big impact on how their skin ages. Sunscreen should be every day, all year round. And it's what you do in your 20s. It's one of my most favorite lines I've come up with. What the best thing, the thing that looks most beautiful in your 50s is using sun protection in your 20s. So the younger you start, the better you're going to look when you get old. And when you hit your 30s, I have another line, which I'll share with you. So as I mentioned, acne scarring that can look mild in your 20s can look deep in your 40s. And I really want to be careful to address that as much as possible. One, to minimize acne and acne scarring. But two is to address and treat the scarring as early as possible to minimize long-term problems. So one other thing about acne, and maybe it's part of the plan, is that young people get often get acne because it's to get them into that routine to, to help them age beautifully. So looking at the brighter side of it, maybe there's a purpose to them getting acne. But acne is certainly not about having dirty skin. It's really just about having good skincare routines. So when you have acne, you want to switch to Acne scar, you want to prevent acne scarring, so you need the right products. Medicated cleansers that contain salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide are really helpful. Serums that have hyaluronic acid that's very breathable, hydrating to the skin. Even if you have oily skin, it's very helpful because it doesn't increase the oil quantity and may help control the oil by having proper hydration to the skin. And so the oil glands don't have that sense of dryness and don't need to overproduce. And also many acne medications can be drying, so you need some hydration in the skin. Acne controlling gels can be helpful as well. And of course, sunscreen. I prefer the mineral-based ones that sit on the skin because they don't clog the pores and they um, also won't create the irritation that sometimes the absorbed sunscreens can use, can cause. So there's often solution sets that we can create. And I find that groups of three are especially helpful for teenagers. Not too many steps, but just enough for the face and for the body can be very helpful. So as I mentioned, nothing looks better in your 50s than sun protection in your 20s. So that's the episode for the 20s. And when I talk about sun protection, it's really about being sun smart. So it's sunscreen every day, all year round, for sure. But it also means wearing a hat with a broad brim, sunglasses, sun protective clothing when possible. It also means trying to stay in the shade and avoiding midday sun when you can. And I hear patients all the time coming in with sunburns and heavy tans, and they tell me, but I wore sunscreen and I still got burnt. The reality is that the tan still counts. Even if you use sunscreen and you do your best to protect, but you still burn or tan, that's still damage to your skin. And it means we need to go one level up in what we're doing. So if you're wearing sunscreen, maybe try a higher SPF. Maybe try avoiding midday sun more. Go to that next level of being sun smart in order to prevent that tan. And if you need vitamin D, get it from a supplement. That's the best way to get it. I have all sorts of options for proper sun protection. The, uh, the, the non-absorbed, the mineral base, which are non-absorbed sunscreens, I prefer those because they're not absorbed into the skin. There's less question about them. Some of the avobenzones and the cinemates are fine, but some people have issues with irritation. They tend to be more cosmetically elegant when they're absorbed because they're not sitting on your skin. But some of the newer mineral-based sunscreens, and these are some of my favorites, 
will have a nice tint to them and can even work as a tinted moisturizer or a makeup primer if you want to wear it under your foundation. And then a brush sunscreen is really great for reapplication, especially if you wear makeup or you're running out and about and you don't want to keep reapplying a sunscreen otherwise. So powder ones are good and, um, and I, I like those as well. And there's great bundles for your 20s that you can do. And there's more about that coming up with some of the specials just for watching today. So as we move through our 20s into our 30s and 40s and into our 20s, 30s and 40s, we kind of have to tear down the anti-aging sentiments that come up and build up a pro-aging beautifully because I think that older is better and it's there's so many great things. Like as I've gone through every decade, I realize that there's good things that come with all those, those numbers that add up chronologically, that biologic aging and chronologic aging are two different things. Chronologic aging is how long you've been alive. And hopefully that chronologic age will keep going up because we want to live long, healthy lives as much as possible. But the biologic aging we have control over, that's diet, that's sleep. That's having a good mental attitude. And of course, using great products and taking care of your skin as we've been talking about. So now we're hitting into our 20s, which is a very kind of unpredictable time for many women and many men because you're, you're just out of college in many cases, starting your first job, deciding where you're gonna live in your life and often thinking about getting married and starting a family. So there's a lot of uncertainty that goes in your 20s that can cause stress. And we want to really enhance your natural beauty as much as possible and work around those stressors. So one is managing stress, but understanding that your 20s are a naturally beautiful decade. And too many women come in in their 20s and they say, well, I want to do preventative treatments, preventative Botox. And the reality is that there's no, preventative is when you start to have lines at rest. It's not when you have natural movement that's completely authentic and beautiful. And when you're at rest, there's not a hint of a line left behind. It's really when we start to see those lines start to get etched in, which can happen as young as in your 20s, but typically not till the end of your 20s into your 30s. So it's not necessarily the time to start with neuromodulators and fillers. It's really a time to think about lighter treatments like the clear and brilliant laser that's going to help even out skin tone or a lighter fraxel or certain chemical peels that will help with collagen production, firming and keeping your skin tone even. And it's really about being sun smart and starting that beautiful skincare routine if you haven't um, done that already. Because when you start making dramatic changes in your 20s, then what happens is you don't really ever know what you would look like. So when you start doing lots of fillers in the lips and the cheeks and so many of the things that I'm seeing is that it distorts your view of yourself and also can distort how you age. And I think that's kind of a pity. So I'm very careful of what I do in my 20 year old patients, if anything, and we talk about high quality effective skincare, feature enhancing fillers, for small changes that I can see coming from much experience. But this is something that should not be done at a med spa. It's really a very selective and precise, discreet treatment when it's needed. And sometimes it's listening to understanding that it's not needed yet, but something we can keep our eye on. And as I mentioned, the gentle resurfacing lasers and peels. And one of the things to think about is the way that this works is that there's extrinsic aging, meaning that's from external factors. And then there's in intrinsic aging. So intrinsic aging is your genetic aging. And this is what you start to see in your 20s. And that intrinsic aging is something that can and exacerbate your extrinsic. So they play poorly together, really. And since you can't control your intrinsic aging, you really have to think about what's going on from outside. How much sun are you getting? How much stress? What's your diet like? What's your daily life routine? So extrinsic is everything outside of your gen genetics, but you have control. And look at all the things that the extrinsic aging does. It increases reactive oxygen species. It degrades antioxidants, um, inhibits uh, pathways and 
upregulates enzymes that break down collagen and elastin and that accelerate your aging. So when you control those things, whether it's through diet, through topical antioxidants, through managing your stressors, through um, a whole range of effects, even lasers and other treatments we do, we can optimize our intrinsic aging, our genetic aging, and help ourselves look our best through the years. I can tell when I see somebody in their 70s who's been great about how they take care of their skin over the past 30, 40, 50 years, their skin looks better. And there's nothing more beautiful and youthful, no matter what your age is, than when you have beautiful, healthy skin. So we want to improve our collagen production, we want to improve how we age and optimize that intrinsic aging. So when you get to your late 20s, that's when we start considering neuromodulators. That's things like Botox or Dysport, Xeomin or Juveau. And they're called neuromodulators because they act on muscles to help soften those movements to redirect energy. One of the myths about neuromodulators is that it was designed to help stop movement altogether. And so we see that frozen face and go, oh, success, we, we stopped that movement, that's great. But in reality, that's actually a fail in my view. The idea is never to make it so that you cannot move. The idea is to gently create some resistance to negative movement, like the lines between the eyes, so that by softening the pull down, we naturally get a lift. One of the worst places and the earliest places where people ask for a neuromodulator is in the forehead. Now your forehead muscle is holding up your brows. The more neuromodulator we put there, the more your brows drop because you can't use that muscle as well. So it's kind of backwards. People will say, put it here so I get a brow lift. It's the opposite. The more you put along here, the more your brows drop, the more your forehead muscle will flatten and the older you will look at a younger age. So when you see somebody with a smooth, waxy forehead that cannot move, one is they look less authentic and less trustworthy, and they also will age faster. So between the eyes is a great place to do it because this movement, this furrowing is a negative movement. It makes you look angry and actually feel angry. And we know that emotions are tied to expression as much as expression is to emotion. So when you make an angry or sad face, you feel sad or angry and you make other people kind of, you project that onto someone else as well. Same with the smile lines. When you smile, it's beautiful to have movement in that area. You don't want to take it away entirely. But if it starts creeping down the side of your face and you start squinting, we need to redirect that energy, and make it softer, and help open your eyes when you smile. So neuromodulators are used in very precise ways to help redirect that movement and that energy to help you age better and younger, but they're not meant to take away all movement. One of the most interesting places to use neuromodulators is in the lower face, the chin, and the neck. And these are off-label uses, but they work really well. So it's something to consider later in your 20s and up. When it comes to lip fillers, this is very trendy. And there are studies that show that if you look at a lot of pictures of people with bigger lips, you're gonna want your lips done. So if you feel like getting your lips done, sometimes you have to go back and say, what have I been looking a lot at? Have I been looking at a lot of Instagram pictures and everyone has really big lips, so I'm kind of feeling deficient? And then maybe change what your what I call your C, seafood diet. It's like what you see is make, is becomes what you want or just stop looking in the mirror because your lips have to match your face. And having these large lips are not attractive. It makes me very sad to see how much people are changing the shapes of their lips. And if you do it over time, it can migrate up, push out and create an extra line underneath. So be very careful. And fillers and lips can last six months to a year or even longer. And people just keep wanting them done more and more. But and this is a big problem of, of women in their 20s who want more and more lip filler, more to make a statement or to feel like they match the trend, but it's not great. And then there's different techniques that we can use to inject fillers when we need them in discrete amounts to make it look natural. And sometimes a cannula can be better. What we're trying to do is create a sense of wrinkle amnesia. 
And that means that you forget how to make that expression, especially the ones between your eyes that are negative. If you can forget to make that expression, wrinkle amnesia, then you won't make the wrinkle and then you won't need to keep doing the neuromodulator. And that's something that can be a nice way to sort of age better. And that's one of the reason why in some of my younger patients, I'll use a neuromodulator when I see that they're pathologically constantly making that one face because I want to break the habit. And then I teach some facial exercises, which I'll show you now. So when you have, um, you can pull your ears back. So this is one expression, ears down and then ears back. Can you see my ears going up? So when you do that, your jaw's relaxed and you're really lifting your whole face. It's kind of like smiling big, but without the smile. I put some of these videos on my Instagram, so you can look there for them. But that expression of pulling back and moving this way gives you a lift, makes you more present, and you can't move in two directions at once. Laws of physics say you can only go in one direction at a time, so you can't burrow and go back at once. So moving back in that direction will really help you age younger. And when we use neuromodulators, it's very precise, discrete applications to help create that wrinkle amnesia and help you age in a younger way. And so the retrograde wrinkle amnesia means artfully preventing wrinkles, preserving natural movement, and aging gracefully versus helplessly. So you can see a nice before and after of a lip enhancement. She has a larger face. Her upper lip is too small for her lower lip. So we just created some balance and we also augmented her chin to help it balance her face. And it's a nice outcome and we evened out her lips. Her right side was a little bit smaller than her left. So we evened that out. This is another person who had a bit of a gummy smile and just needed a little bit more balance to her lips. So when she smiled, her lip would disappear. And as you can see, her lips look way more balanced and just a very small amount of lip filler helped balance it out. And this is someone who needed some natural fullness to her lips. So we just used a cannula, which is a soft needle. It's an interesting technique that gave back her, sh her shape and restored balance to her lips and the areas around her mouth and her chin to soften the angles. And you can see it's just a natural, beautiful, soft look. And you wouldn't know she had anything done. They're not big lips. They're just appropriate for her face. And that's always the goal. When it comes to laser treatments, there's different types of lasers. There's fractional resurfacing. There's more than norm now. And as once we discovered fractional resurfacing, so when you have normal laser resurfacing before fractional, when you had, if you look at that circle, in regular lasers that's not fractional, the entire circle would be knocked out, would be ablated or treated. But with fractional resurfacing, a fraction of the skin in a random pattern is targeted and you have bridges of normal skin in between, which allows for faster healing and gentler treatments without compromising on results. So I love the Fatona fractional to help even out skin tone, reverse some sun damage and help stimulate collagen production. It's barely uncomfortable even, we don't use numbing. And while you need several treatments as you do with Fraxel, which I also have, you, I find that you get beautiful results and what's as important as a treatment is what we do around it. We use topical growth factors, sometimes topical Sculptra, and then we, we send you home with a routine that's very specific to enhance wound healing, enhance collagen production, and take advantage of this very structured wound that we created to stimulate collagen. So in the past, we didn't know to add in these special ingredients. We would just do the laser, send people home with Vaseline. But now that we have a better understanding of antioxidants and wound healing, we add in very precise ingredients that are going to help your skin enhance repair, not only just faster, but better. So fewer treatments are needed. And over time, as you do these treatments, it lowers your risk of skin cancer, it improves sun damage, evens out skin tone, and helps with collagen production. So you can see before and after from a fractional 
Fraxel IPL combination with skincare and also fillers. It's a natural rejuvenated look where people compliment her and tell her she looks beautiful, but you can't tell that anything was done. And this is the goal for aging beautifully. This is intense pulse light that's used for rosacea and redness and even sun damage. You get some firming from it, but you get beautiful improvement in skin quality and tone. So when you have redness and blotchy skin, I've put together a series of products that can help address that for you. We like detoxifying masks, which are sulfa-based, using a gentle cleanser. My all-day mask has fabulous ingredients that create a barrier repair. It's great if you're wearing a mask, but even if you just have redness and blotchy skin around the mouth or on the face. This is a brilliant product that is patent pending that I created around wearing a mask, but has worked for perioral dermatitis and rosacea as well. And the ultra rich peptide renewal is one of, is an outstanding product to use at night, especially after resurfacing treatments or if you have drier skin. And then there's a body retinol because at this age is when you want to start working on firming the body and preventing creepy skin from happening later. The Clear and Brilliant Laser is one of my favorites to help reduce the appearance of pores, which is often a problem in this age group, and improve the look of fine lines and wrinkles that are just starting to hint and come up, and it leaves you with a younger looking complexion and radiant glow. You can see beautiful before and afters after Clear and Brilliant. The skin quality is better, the tone is better. And I've added in a beautiful bundle for your 30s and on. Because you really need to start working on the eye. And when you apply an eye cream, applying gentle dabbing around the eyes is really important. So when you get into your 40s and 50s, this is when people come in and they say, one day my face just fell apart. They may not have gotten into the program early enough in making sure they use sunscreen every day. They may even have gone to tanning salons. Also, if you've had children that has some wear and tear on your body and on your skin, I blame kids for everything. And now, you, <laughs> but I love my kids. But it's also about entering perimenopause. So it's a time to see your OBGYN and have a conversation to see when it might be a right time or if it's appropriate for you to start hormone replacement therapy, of which I'm a big fan as part of how you manage your overall aging. Because hormone replacement therapy, just as an aside, helps against dementia, heart disease, osteoporosis, and losing collagen. You lose about 30% of your collagen in the first five years post-menopause. So hormone replacement, which is a lower dose estrogen or estradiol that then is in the pill or in hormonal contraception. So it's a very low amount to prevent symptoms, but can help you age better. And I don't prescribe it. So you need to see a doctor who knows how to prescribe it and how to follow it for you to have the right dosing and medication for you. But it's also a time to see your dermatologist and to come in for things like Thermage or all therapy or the Petona 5D. These use radio frequency, ultrasound, or laser energy to stimulate collagen, tighten, and lift without surgery. Sometimes I'll do a combination of these where we might do bulk heating with Thermage of the whole face follow up and just do a brow lift with the all-therapy or the Fetona 5D to supplement the all-therapy and the thermage or people are very uh, pain sensitive or are afraid of the discomfort from all-therapy or thermage, start with the Fetona because it's less uncomfortable and they all work amazingly well at lifting, firming, toning the skin and either delaying or if you've had a facelift, making that facelift last even longer. So these are great treatments that are done typically one to two to up to three times a year, depending on which one you're doing to help maintain that balance. And they're, they're outstanding treatments that we're happy to tell you more about. So the idea of Fetona was something that we've enhanced. So the Fetona 4D, so Fetona is a laser, it's a dual wavelength laser that helps with tightening and lifting, very little in the way of downtime. None of these lasers have much in the way, of, or devices have much in the way of downtime, meaning you can do it and then just get on with your day. With all therapy and thermage, you may be a little bit pink after, the Fetona a little bit more pink after for a day, and that's about it because most of the work is going deep under the skin to help stimulate that collagen and improve firmness. And 
um, Photona 5D was a breakthrough uh, in the way that it fully ut utilizes the power of this amazing laser and provides patients with the most holistic treatment to address fine lines, wrinkles, discoloration, laxity, and textural changes. It can do everything from getting rid of some fat under the chin to overall tightening. Depending on the laser settings we use, we have very tight control over how this device can improve the quality and texture of your skin. And it's one of my most favorite things for face and also for arms, for thighs, for stomach. We have different hand pieces, different settings for different parts of the body and it's quite outstanding. So this is uh, five months after the first treatment with Fatona. And you can see an improvement in the quality of the skin. And this is also six months after the second treatment. You can see an improvement in the skin quality, the shape, the firm, the toning. And when you look at advanced injectables, this is what we're up to in your 40s and 50s and beyond really, is that in the past we had a few spots we injected. But the reason why I say it's so important to see a proper aesthetic trained physician is because these areas that we're injecting we use very small amounts placed very discreetly. We understand anatomy, we understand aging and technique. There's up to close to 20 different fillers that we now use that are typically made of hyaluronic acid. We use needles or cannulas. There's so many different ways that we inject in so many different planes of the skin. And with that technical injection, whether it's Botox or Dysport or Zeman or Javot, the neuromodulators and the fillers, the combination can create and restore beautiful balance to your skin. So it's not about looking 20, but it's about looking youthful. So it's not younger, it's youthful. And that means that you'll have balance. When you look at the upper third of the face, the middle third and the lower third, they should all be in balance. And we also have to target the visible signs of aging when, it, when you talk about sunspots and discoloration. So at this age group, it's about evening out skin tone and also using lasers for resurfacing and for tightening and neuromodulators and dermal fillers to help rebalance. And again, you can see here using this combination of fillers and devices and neuromodulators, she looks beautiful, not like she's had a facelift, which is I think a compliment, but she looks beautiful and balanced. So we've improved her cheeks, we've lifted her nose by injecting underneath, we've softened the chin because it was receding, straightened out the jawline, even lifted the brows. So she looks exactly as we want. Another case where we've restored some volume very discreetly, she naturally had full cheeks. We just had to put it into balance. So with a little bit of lip filler, filler around the temples, neuromodulator throughout, glabella, a little bit in the forehead, the sides, the crow's feet, and along the neck and the chin. We've evened out her face and given her back her natural proportions. So I've created a bundle for your 50s for your 40s and 50s and up. And here again, we need hyaluronic acid serum in the daytime and maybe even twice a day. The, a moisturizer with my ultra-rich peptide renewal, which has beautiful hydrating elements that and peptides, so it's anti-aging and hydrating. And also you need the hydrator, the sunscreen, at least once a day in the morning and throughout the day if you're out and about. The Hydrate Facial Silk has zinc, it gives a natural tone, can work as a tinted moisturizer or as a primer under your foundation. When we look at the 60s and beyond, what we're looking for is restoration and rejuvenation. And best of all is to have an individualized combination treatment plan. So here we're looking at skin that may be sagging a little bit and the you're seeing that disconnect between the bones starting to shrink a little bit and the soft tissue which is every layer above that starting to expand, which creates a laxity. So I can't get rid of all of it, but I can improve the overall balance. So now if you look at her before and after, she just looks less tired and she has back some restoration of volume and even some of the acne scars that may have been mild in her 20s that look deeper in the before look better because we've helped to restore the overall skin itself. So by injections into the chin, the nasolabial fold, the chin around the brows and along the jawline. And of course, this is still a work in progress using a variety of products, whether it's 
There are ones that are biostimulants like Sculptra, which is made of polyalactic acid, which we put in her temples, or Voluma in her cheeks and her chin, and wrestling Refine and Juvederm Ultra for the area around the mouth. What we see is that through several sessions and a good amount of filler, we've restored a more youthful look without trying to make her look like she's 20. So we're not erasing every line or wrinkle, no need to do that, but we want a beautiful, youthful balance. And in the arms, you can make a nice difference as well. You can see improvement in the crepey skin. It's not all gone, but it's markedly better. And this is using a body retinol, my retinol body serum, along with radius injections, which can be biostimulating, and our, our Fatona for skin tightening for this area. So she did quite well. And this is also another patient where we did some beautiful work on the face, where we improved her overall skin from the outside with skincare and Fraxel. And then we use the Fatona fractional. We did threads, just Euro threads, not the lifting threads, but the smoothening threads for the fine lines around the mouth. And then filler along the jaw, cheeks, under the nose, and in the chin, and her neuromodulator, so which is Botox in this case. And you can see she just looks so much more youthful and less tired. It's not a facelift look because we're not aiming for that, but it's a very youthful, beautiful, authentic look that she walks out with her head high and she just feels great. Makes me so happy to see. And this is another case where we use fillers in the chin. She naturally had a small chin that receded even more as she aged and we needed to define the jawline and lift her cheeks. So using fat melting, we got rid of some of the fat under her chin. Then we did some neck tightening and then we used fillers to define and lift. And of course, great skincare and neuromodulators. Another patient where we use a combination of devices and lasers to soften her appearance and the lines that were dragging down. Because having these marionette lines that drag down from your chin, from your lips to your chin can, can really be a drag. So we lifted that up a bit for her. Not gone, but markedly improved. So when you look at the Pro Aging Solution Set, you always want to start with a clean palette. Makeup can attract pollution, which can be toxic to the skin if left on overnight. We want hyaluronic acid. Again, we need that hydration. It can hold a, a thousand times its weight in water. So we want that hydration. Gentle peptide growth factors around the eyes. That's one of my favorite products, along with the ultra-rich peptide renewal. And you're going to protect with the sunscreen. And for cleansing, again, you got to cleanse once a week, weekly exfoliating pads, exfoliating occasionally is really important to help remove those dead skin cells that are ready to come off. And so the products that you apply after will penetrate better, but you don't want to overstrip the skin. So my gentle weekly exfoliating pads are both gentle and meant to be used once or twice a week. And then you need your hydrators. I love a retinol at night for every age, even in your 60s and beyond just need the right retinol and also for the body and moisturize on top. So I'm happy to answer any questions. You can email us and there's polls and which will eventually display the results for you because we're aggregating all our poll results and we'll post the surveys as well. So please answer all the questions and go to our website because we have some specials just for you for watching today. And I'm excited to get your feedback on this webinar and always be here for you. And I have another masterclass coming up, which I'll tell you about shortly. Thanks for watching.